This program is sponsored by the Norwegian taxpayers. Kirkvog, Lystad, Mjørn makes KLM. Tower 2, Kilo Lima Mike, can you hear me? Come in, KLM. KLM, come in. This is Tower calling KLM. Come in, please. You're clear to land. I repeat, you're clear to land. Oh, uh, pull up, pull up, careful. Pull up, pull up, pull up. You're too left. Pull. Well, okay, I said land, not crash. The International KLM Show has just landed in Montreux. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. The technological revolution is changing our lives at an ever-increasing pace these days. I still remember when people used to say, the steam engine is here to stay. <laughs> the telegraph is here to stay. The gramophone is here to stay. The typewriter is here to stay. And the punch card machine is here to stay. Some years ago, I even thought that sex was here to stay. <laughs> but alas. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, modern information technology is certainly here to stay. Hello? 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 Excuse me. I'm sorry. It was just the kitchen timer. <laughs> Call 45, the fastest phone in the West. Not many years ago, you were at home when you were at home, and you were at the office when you were at the office. Today you can be at the office while still at home, and still at home while at the office. Actually, you can be about anywhere and still be at the office. Our next guest, ladies and gentlemen, happens to be such an office. Please welcome Mr. James Bondich. Welcome, Mr. Bondage. Thank you. Well, my word, this looks a little extreme, does it? Well, I might look that way, but actually all this equipment is necessary to run an office today. Yeah, I see, mm. I see. So, uh, what is all that stuff? Uh, well, it's for various instance, things, the, you know. For instance, the thing on your head there. Oh, well, that's a dictaphone. Dictaphone, yeah. I see. So, you, that means you have a secretary then? No, no, it's for me. Oh, to save time and money, I speak all my messages into this microphone, go straight into my ear, and straight from there down to my brain. <laughs> your brain? Well, not my brain, really. It's my uh, office's brain, you know. Yeah. It's a Big Mac, 75 RAM, 750 megabyte disk, and it's connected to this external modem here, uh -huh. and this color printer here, state-of-the-art. Right. And I also got this cellular phone uh, mm -hmm. with several lines, uh, easily accessible here, mm -hmm. and that's connected to this answering machine here, and here are my beepers. Why do you have two beepers? Well, it's one for incoming and one for outgoing messages, of course. <laughs> of course, I see. But, but doesn't all this high-tech, uh, state-of-the-art equipment uh, uh, become uh, a little sterile and impersonal in the long run? Yeah, it does a bit, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's why I've tried to brighten up the office a bit with a picture of a wife and kids, you know? <laughs> ah, yes, I see. But it's incredible what a few flowers will do to brighten up the office. Oh, they are a bit dry, aren't they? May yeah. I? Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Thank sure. you. I see. Oh, dear. That's much better. I see. Thank well. you. Well... I think something is coming out here on the back here. Ah, yeah. Well, that's a fax. Right. Oh, damn. <clears throat> yeah, what does it say? Well, it's another cancellation, isn't it? Terrible. Right. I see. Well, <clears throat> I, I, I think I forgot to ask what line of business you're in. Oh, I sell office machines. Aha, uh -huh, the kind you're wearing, then. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I don't sell these. I buy these. No, I sell, um, I sell typewriters. <laughs> typewriters? Yeah. I mean... Electrical typewriters? No, no, real typewriters. You mean the old... The, um... Bling! 
Yeah, that's Final a coin. Final typewriters? That's a coin, yeah. Right. Uh, is there still a market for such typewriters? Well, there might not be much of a market, but on the other hand, there ain't much of uh, competition either, you know. Oh, I see. <laughs> I guess so. How many, how many of these machines can you sell annually? Annually? Well, anything from 10 to 12... Thousand? No, no, are you mad? No. Uh, 10 to 12 typewriters. A year? Yeah. Well, not ma that many, maybe. Maybe six. Six typewriters? Well, I shouldn't exaggerate. Three. Three. Well, two then. Two, right. Maybe one. <laughs> one typewriter? None. None. Not one single typewriter. I see. Well, not a single one. would you then say that the future looks very promising, Mr. Bondage? Well, maybe not at the moment, mm. but I mean, just... Imagine the day when the typewriter market just t takes off, you know. Yeah. Who's then ready with full warehouses and, and top capacity? Mm. James Bondage Incorporated, that's me. Right. I guess I've, so. e I've even installed the latest uh, uh, credit card system to be able to handle the uh, flow of money. Right. What, yeah. uh, what kind of credit card system is that? I'll show you, I'll show you all, actually. Mm -hmm. It's um, the system here. Have you got a card? Yes. Yeah, well, just um, insert your card and uh, enter your PIN code. Okay, <clears throat> well... <laughs> Oops, careful! <laughs> and, uh... Hey, 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 hey! What's hey. the matter? What's the matter? Well, but the, the, the machine swallowed my card! Oh, shit, that's a third card today. Yeah, what, what do we do? I, I, um, I, well, I'm having it serviced next week. Yeah, but that's too late. I need it now! Well, then you only have one option. What's that? You can come home with me after the show. <laughs> All right. Coffee? As we all know, the Russian president, Mr. Boris Yeltsin, has been in and out of hospitals lately. In spite of that, we have been assure assured that his briefcase, the black one with the infamous red atomic button that can wipe out nations, is always by his side. I think this uh, briefcase is constructed sometimes back in the 60s, in the time of the Cold War, and though we have heard a lot about it, I've never seen it with my own eyes, and neither have you, I guess. So, to rectify that, ladies and gentlemen, we have managed, finally, to get the black atomic briefcase to this show to give it a closer look. Please welcome the Russian president, Mr. Boris Yeltsin.
Mister. Just one moment, please. Welcome to the program, Mr. President. Welcome to Norway. Spanking. Spanking? Uh, maybe later. <laughs> I, I thought that uh, spasiva meant thank you. Oh, you're quite right. Yes. Yes, I. Uh, right. Well, 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 this, I guess, is the infamous uh, black briefcase with the red atomic button. Is that true? No. Yes, and uh, is it possible to have a small demonstration? Demonstration is where it should be done. Yes, please. All right, Tornado. The president have... says we have to turn around uh, while he opens the secret combination locks. I see, yes. Well, I guess we can do that. <laughs> You're right, Tornado. Now we can turn back again. Aha. Uh -huh. There, it's ready. Wow, 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 I'm impressed. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the famous... <laughs> the doom fame machine that can wipe out nations in macro minutes by just... Pulling this button, I think, and uh, can you demonstrate to us how you start the Third World War? Not for real. Fake. Fake, yeah, Premier in California. The president first get a call about the situation from the general staff or someone. Uh -huh. And then he presses the button to alert uh, the army. Uh -huh. The navy. And Aeroflot. Aeroflot? Aeroflot. Aeroflot? We are in the company of civil services. We are in the company of communication with catastrophe. We are in the contact. Oh no. Oh no, yes. Hello? What do you say? The line is busy. Right, that's assuring. And, and um, what happens next? Ah, here is one of the ladies. Air tornado. We have to turn our backs again. Again? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, boy, boy, boy. <coughs> right on. Now we're going to turn back. I see. Now, turns on the main power. Uh huh. 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 Uh hu
Welcome to Norway, Mr. President. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Mm. We have now uh, seen uh, Mr. Yeltsin's black uh, briefcase here, but mm. your briefcase looks almost the same, Mr. President. Well, it's uh, what's inside that counts. Yes, I guess so, and we're very curious about what's inside of yours. Well, well this looks like an ordinary Macintosh power book to me. Well, it's a bit more powerful than that. We call it the Superpower Mac. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Super Mac, I see. I well, see. it sure is Super Mac, Dora. Right. Yes. But what is your? Where is your? Uh, where is your red atomic button? Well, for safety reasons, it's a bit more advanced than that. In what way? Well, take any country. Take uh, Iraq, for instance. Mm -hmm. I just uh, mark the country, mm -hmm. and then I just push delete. Right. <laughs> I see. I see. <laughs> and what if you regret it? Well, um, there's no problem, you know, because any time I push the delete button, there's always an automatic question asking, are you sure you want to delete Iraq? And then I think about it and I push yes. <laughs> or, or cancel, whatever I feel like. Right, I yes. see, I see. So you have the choice, right? Yes, or uh, take Libya, for instance. Mm -hmm. I could just uh, mark Libya and just gently drag it down to the wastebasket and just dump it. Right, right. So what you're saying, Mr. President, is that with this machine you can, you can easily destroy the whole world. Well, no, on the contrary, I can save the world. And to save the world, mm -hmm. I just push save and then disc out. <laughs> just like that, I got the whole world in my hand. Right. <laughs> I see. But, uh, but all these machines uh, uh, have to have a program. What, what kind of program is in this machine? Well, this machine, uh, the program is uh, world perfect, of course. <laughs> of course. I see, I see. Well, um, I'd like to take this opportunity, if I may, to uh, present this uh, Super Power Mac as a gift from the American people to the Russian president, Mr. Yeltsin. Oh. <laughs> How do we start it without el electricity? Ah, uh, heard of batteries, Boris? Mm. Attention, please. Departure Moskovskaya 1 to Moscow, gate number 3. That's your plan, nice Mr. President. Nice, 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 nice journey home. Safe Thank journey. you. Boris Yeltsin. But, Mr. President, did you really give him your superpower, Mac? I mean, with that machine, he too can destroy the world. Oh, relax, son. I mean, he may have the machine, but I still got the world. <laughs> okay. Attention, please. Departure, Air Force One, to nice Washington, me. gate right. number two. Safe journey home. Thank you, Mr. Bye. President. Thank nice you. Nice meeting you all. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Mr. Bill Clinton, President of the United States. It's film time, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's feature film is Arthur Miller's immortal classic, Death of a Salesman. There you go, sir. It's a plumber special for you, is it? Yes, that's right. Ah, one more. 
moment, sir. Steak? Shut up and eat your soup. It's my husband down there. I don't know what happened. He just came out as his usual does and then just slipped on this and fell down. This is Mr. Peterson. Despite the fact that he's nearly 60, has a weak heart and a wooden leg, and always carries with him large sums of money, he is never afraid of walking through the darkest and most dangerous back alleys in the city. Never see it again. Yes, here we are, sir. Your cream case surprise. Waiter, I've always wondered, why is it called cream cake surprise? Five years ago, the famous Norwegian polar explorer Roald Amundsen led the world's first expedition to set foot on the South Pole. Ever since that glorious moment, we Norwegians have taken great pride in maintaining our reputation as great polar explorers. Thus, the first man to set foot on the pole single-handedly was Norwegian. The first woman to set foot on the South Pole single-handedly was also Norwegian. And so was the first painter and the first handicapped person. These days, several new expeditions, international and Norwegians, are preparing to go to the Antarctica. Among them, a new Norwegian one-man expedition with a quite original concept. Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Carl Erik Hardon. <laughs> welcome, Mr. Hardon. Have a seat, please. And Mr. Hardon, uh, the quite extraordinary expedition concept of yours is that you are planning to become the first drunkard on the South Pole. Yes, yes that, that's abs absolutely correct. Not, not, not only am I going to be drunk on the sa South Pole, but I'm, I'm going to be drunk all the way there as well. I see. Well, why is this so important to you? What? To, to be the, become the first drunkard on the Pole. Oh, yes, well... First of all, just the fact of being the first drunk, uh, drunker there, mm. you know, because down there, imagine, down, the, down there <laughs> is an entire continent just screaming to be conquered by dr drunkards. Yes, sure. Excuse me for just a second. <clears throat> well, do you have to do that in the studio? There's children watching, maybe, and... Uh... Yes, well, you see, I, I, I have to do that because... In order for my expedition to be officially sanctioned, mm -hmm. I have to keep a steady blood alcohol level of 2.0 absolutely oh, all the time. <laughs> day or night, 24 hours a day and night I and see. day. Did yeah. I say night? Yes, <laughs> yeah. night and day. 
So what you're saying, Mr. Harlan, is that you are planning to go on foot from the coast here and up to the South Pole, 1,500 miles drunk as a skunk. Well, 3,000 3, miles, really. 3,000 miles? Yeah. Why? Why is that? I'll, sh I'll show you. Ho, 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 ho. And a I see. Of rum. I, and I, oh, sorry, I see the point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yes, I, I, I understand. almost broke yeah. the flag but there. To drink night and day for yes. more than 70 days mm. in temperatures down to 30, 40, 50 degrees yeah. below zero must yeah. put an incredible strain on your body. Yes, that's where, that's where the real ch challenge lies, you know. Yes. But I'm not completely unprepared for this, you know. No? I've been practice, practicing for seven years. Right. <laughs> so right. so I, I, should, I should be all right. But the uh, return trip, though, will pr probably be hell. I guess so. Why is that? Because I will have no nothing left to drink. <laughs> no, I see that could be a problem. Yeah, yeah. Yes. and we're not talking about the day, day after, you know, we're talking about the year after. after <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. Not to mention the hell of dra dragging all the empty bo bottles home. No, because we have to think about the environment, though. <laughs> well, sc screw the environment. You know, I'm, I'm th thinking about the deposit on the, on the bottles. I see. <laughs> Well, thank you, Mr. Hardon, and we want you to know that you have the whole nation behind you in your quest to become the first drunkard on the South Pole. <laughs> Mr. Hardon, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what's go, what's go, going on now, then? I think you have a plane to catch. Oh, is it, is it that late? Oh, yes. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Nice to have you here. Nice to have, yes. have me here. Yes. Thank you. That's your... Okay, backpack. I'm off to the North Pole. Bye. Goodbye. To the South Pole, is it? Oh, sorry, yes, South Pole. South Pole, is it? That way, I think, yes. Thank you and goodbye. That was Mr. Hardon, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. And our last guest tonight is a person that you all know. He is a famous politician. At... Excuse me. You have... What is it? You'll have to have a, bu a bu bucket. Why? I feel a bit sick. Right. Well, not here. I'm... No, 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 not here. Please, please. But you, you'll find a bucket out there, okay? okay. Thank you. As I said, ladies and gentlemen, our last guest tonight is a person you all know. He is the person responsible for the French nuclear bomb testings at the Mururua Atoll. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the President of France, Monsieur Jacques Chirac. Yes. Hello. C'est une scandale. C'est terrible. Not only have you insulted me, you have insulted the France. Ah, I'm terribly sorry. No, 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 no. Sorry about that. Well, I'm afraid that's all for now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, and good night. Thank you.